Now we'll look at the muscles which produce movement of the toes. We'll look at the extensor muscles first. There are two long extensors to the toes and two short ones. The long extensors are two of the four muscles that we left out of the picture in the last section. Here's extensor hallucis longus. Extensor hallucis longus arises from the interosseous membrane and from the adjoining fibula. Lying on top of extensor hallucis longus is extensor digitorum longus. Extensor digitorum longus has a long line of origin here on the fibula. This gap is for the common perineal nerve. To see all the muscles of the anterior compartment together, we'll add tibialis anterior to the picture. Here it is. We saw tibialis anterior in the last section. It almost covers up extensor hallucis longus. We'll also add perineus tertius, which arises in continuity with extensor digitorum longus. Here are the tendons of all these muscles passing under the extensor retinaculum. Perineus tertius, extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, and tibialis anterior. The tendon of extensor hallucis longus inserts partly into the extensor expansion of the first MP joint and partly here into the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe. The tendons of extensor digitorum longus insert, by way of the extensor expansion of each toe, into the bases of the middle and distal phalanges. The extensor expansion of the toe is quite similar to the extensor expansion of the finger, which is described in some detail in Volume 1 of this atlas. Here's the action of extensor hallucis longus. It extends both joints of the big toe. Here's the action of extensor digitorum longus. Its action is mainly at the MP joint. The two long toe extensor muscles have another important action besides extending the toes. They're also quite powerful dorsiflexors of the ankle. Now let's add the short extensors to the picture. Here they are. They lie beneath the tendons of the long extensors. Extensor hallucis brevis goes to the big toe. The four slips of extensor digitorum brevis go to the four short toes. The short toe extensors arise here on the front of the calcaneus. The tendons of the short extensors join the corresponding long extensor tendons. The action of the short extensors is the same as that of the long extensors, except that they don't dorsiflex the ankle. Now we'll move on to look at the numerous small muscles on the plantar aspect of the foot. The intricacy of these muscles reminds us that our human foot has evolved from feet that had many other functions besides that of being walked on. Since some of the smaller muscles are now almost vestigial structures, we'll be looking at them quite briefly. We'll look at the small plantar muscles in four groups. First, the interosseous muscles, then the short muscles that occupy the middle of the foot, then the short muscles for the big toe, and lastly, the ones for the fifth toe. Here are the interosseous muscles. There are seven of them, two for each of the three middle toes, and one for the fifth toe. The interosseous muscles arise from the shafts of the metatarsals, and insert into the bases of the proximal phalanges. The action of the interosseous muscles is to flex the toes at the MP joints. Now we'll look at the middle group of muscles. These are all closely associated with the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. The middle group consists of the tiny lumbrical muscles, flexor accessorius, and superficial to them, flexor digitorum brevis, 
which we'll see again in a moment. The four lumbricals are just like the lumbricals in the hand. We won't look at them in detail. Flexor accessorius, also called quadratus planti, arises by two heads, from here and here on the calcaneus. Flexor accessorius inserts here into the deep aspect of the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. Flexor accessorius aids in flexing the toes. Now we'll add flexor digitorum brevis to the picture. Here it is again. Flexor digitorum brevis arises from here on the calcaneus. Flexor digitorum brevis divides to form four tendons. Each of these enters one of the tendon sheaths along with a tendon of flexor digitorum longus. Inside the tendon sheath, which we'll remove, the brevis tendon splits into two halves which encircle the longus tendon. Flexor digitorum brevis inserts here on the basis of the middle phalanges. Flexor digitorum brevis assists in producing flexion at the PIP and MP joints. Lying superficial to flexor digitorum brevis is the plantar aponeurosis, which we've looked at already. Now we'll look at the muscles for the big toe. To build up a picture of them, we'll first take the middle group of muscles out of the picture so that we're again looking at just the interossei. The muscles for the big toe are flexor hallucis brevis, adductor hallucis, and abductor hallucis. We'll look at them in that order. Flexor hallucis brevis has two almost distinct parts, which arise here from the cuboid and third cuneiform bones. Flexor hallucis brevis gives rise to two tendons of insertion, which attach first to the medial and lateral sesamoid bones, then to the base of the proximal phalanx of the big toe. The tendon of flexor hallucis longus, which we'll add to the picture for a moment, runs between the two halves of flexor hallucis brevis. Here's adductor hallucis. It arises by two heads, an oblique head and a transverse head. The oblique head arises from the bases of the middle three metatarsals. The transverse head arises from the deep transverse metatarsal ligament. These two heads converge and merge with the medial head of flexor hallucis brevis, sharing its insertion on the medial sesamoid bone and on the base of the proximal phalanx. Medial to flexor hallucis brevis is abductor hallucis. Abductor hallucis is the most medial of all the foot muscles. It arises here on the medial side of the calcaneus. The tendon of abductor hallucis merges with the medial part of flexor hallucis brevis and inserts with it here on the medial sesamoid bone and on the base of the proximal phalanx. The main action of all three of the short muscles of the big toe is to produce flexion at the MP joint. In addition, adductor and abductor hallucis brevis can produce adduction and abduction of the big toe. Lastly, there are two short muscles for the fifth toe, a short flexor and an abductor. Here's the flexor, flexor digiti minimi brevis. It's an outlying interosseous muscle that's been given a long name. Here's the abductor, abductor digiti minimi. It arises all the way back here on the calcaneus. It's inserted here on the proximal phalanx of the fifth toe. Now that we've seen the muscles for the big toe and the fifth toe, we need to see how all these short muscles fit together. To do that, we'll put the long flexor tendons and then the central group of muscles back into the picture. 
First, we'll add flexor hallucis longus to the picture. Flexor hallucis longus lies deep to abductor hallucis as it enters the foot. Here's flexor digitorum longus entering the foot along with flexor hallucis longus. The tendons of flexor digitorum longus cover up abductor hallucis. Here are the lumbricals, flexor accessorius, and last of all, flexor digitorum brevis. Now that we've seen all the muscles of the foot, let's get a complete picture of the layer of deep fascia that encloses them all, the plantar fascia. The central thickened part of the plantar fascia is the plantar aponeurosis, which we've seen already. The medial and lateral parts of the plantar fascia extend on each side of the plantar aponeurosis. On the medial side, the plantar fascia covers abductor hallucis. On the lateral side, it covers abductor digiti minimi. Here on the lateral side, there's a marked thickening of the plantar fascia called the lateral cord of the plantar aponeurosis, which goes from here on the calcaneus to here on the base of the fifth metatarsal. The lateral cord of the plantar aponeurosis helps to support the longitudinal arch of the foot on the lateral side.